On this video, we're going to demonstrate edge-to-edge -edge mode using end of set. So let's just get started. One of the things I want to show you in end of set, I'm going to click on edge-to-edge -edge mode and let's put our focus down here where the continue method. It says end of set. Now, in Creative Studio 5, that said something different. That said two pins. So, but in Creative Studio 6, we've changed that to end of set because we think most people will like end of set better. I sure do. And that's why we made that default. So now, anytime you start up Creative Studio, it's going to come up end of set. Now, if you don't want that, there's a workaround for that. I'm going to go get out of this, this mode, go to Tools, Technical Support, Controller Definition, and right here is where we can set a registration. If you see in the middle here, it says place two pins or use start. So I'm going to click on end of set because that's what I want it to come up on. Now I'm going to file, save and close. All right, now I'm going to go back and pick up edge to edge mode again. I'm setting on end of set. And it tells me to click the upper left corner of the edge to edge quilt. And this is the area you're going to be quilting in. So we're going to go right here and click OK. Move to the right. Right front. All right, that gives us a boundary of the sewing area. And whenever we start sewing, the pattern has to be black. And that has to be inside of this bottom and the top. If any part of the pattern goes outside of that, it will turn green and it will not sew. So we need to keep it inside of that, the row of quilting so it'll be black, it'll sew. All right, now let's get started here by putting in the length of the quilt. And I have a small quilt here, so I'm going to put in, uh, let's do that at uh, 20, 30. I'll just put in a 30 there. Enter. And it come up with a message that said, select pattern starting in that's on near the top may not be appropriate for end of set. Well, what are we going to do now? We've, we've, uh, we can't use that pattern maybe. Oh, I tell you what, there's another way to fix that. Here's, a, here's what I need to do is say no on this, go over here on the height of the pattern and put in a minus. Enter. Now you notice now we've turned it, we flipped the pattern vertically. If you want a pattern flipped permanently, you can take this, put on the screen, flip it vertically, and resave it as another name, as modified and then you can use that and you don't have to put that minus in every time you, you use end of set. All right, now let's uh, prepare this to sew. If we'll notice, we have the start and the end on the bottom and it's black so it should sew. So let's try it. We'll uh, Go over here three times, okay. 
and pick up our bobbin and OK. I just turned on the black light so that thread would show up real good on the video. Okay, now that it's finished sewing, I'm going to cut my bobbin thread. All right, we're, we're going to talk about this quilt. While if you, on this quilt, it's not a, not a problem of shrinkage. But if you have a large quilt, or a piece back, or if you have real thick batting and a real dense pattern, whenever we take the, uh oh, we didn't put the clamps on, that, that's okay for, for this quilt, but you'd normally put the quilt. When you take the clamps off and roll this, it has a tendency to pull in here at the top. Now using end of set, we use this point right here as our reference and we're going to click continue when we click continue that's going to relocate the pattern on the screen to match where we've rolled this so right now i'm going to roll the quilt we'll unlatch these and roll that I'm going to do something on purpose here. I'm going to roll this back to where I didn't roll it far enough. Let's just say we didn't roll this quilt far enough. And let's put the clamps on this time. All right, when I roll this,